The horse and the human being have had a close relationship for more than 5,000 years, during which time we have discovered their multiple uses and advantages in different fields, such as war, transportation, the agricultural sector and sports, among others. For each of these functions there are certain breeds that must be bred and preserved under certain specifications, in order to establish an effective and profitable production system. In the development of appropriate strategies to achieve this purpose, production plays a fundamental role. A technique of great value for genetic improvement is cryopreservation or freezing of semen. A useful procedure, not only for artificial insemination, but also to determine the specific DNA content of a specimen. That is, what makes it unique and different from any other. With a sperm sample, it is also possible to perpetuate the genetic line of important breeders, establish their kinship with others of the same species and solve cases of rustling or the exchange of cattle. For example, you believe that Merlin may be the father of Epic. We are going to find out, join us on this interesting tour of Antioquia, where we will learn how to correctly take a semen sample. We will later go on to its freezing process and conclude with its corresponding DNA analysis. Our first stop will be in Girardota north of Medellin, where we will get to know this first stage in the field. Welcome to Paradise, home of Merlin and Epico, great stallions of the Colombian Creole breed, from whom we will take a semen sample in order to perpetuate their offspring. The preservation of semen is a very important technique that serves as a basis for using other types of reproductive biotechnologies, such as artificial insemination, embryo transfer, in vitro fertilization. When choosing a specimen for a semen sample, it must not have any type of pathology and different factors must be taken into account, such as genetics phenotypic characteristics, and other traits that are considered important to be transmitted to future generations. For example the fitness and functionality of the animal. To carry out the collection, different methods are used, however, the most common is that of the artificial vagina, in its execution the following elements are necessary. A vagina or inner lining. A collection bag or plastic condom. A leather fastener to provide rigidity and greater ease of handling to the entire artifact. Some bandages in total asepsis and appropriate scissors to cut them. Napkins for grooming the horse prior to riding. A thermometer to monitor the temperature of the vagina. A lubricating gel that lubricates the plastic, which allows the horse to insert its penis more easily. The bag or condom must be placed inside the plastic of the vagina and later insult air and water at about 50 degrees centigrade. This in order to maintain an ideal pressure and a constant temperature similar to the mare between 37 and 38 degrees centigrade. These two conditions are ideal for the horse to ejaculate more easily. For taking samples, there is no time of the year that is better than another. Not because our country is located in the tropics and we do not have stations, but in stationary countries such as North America or Europe, if there are mating stations, in those that are conducive to this type of practice, 
In terms of the frequency of taking samples, it is important to take into account that the equine should not be over-simulated, nor should there be very spaced time ranges between collection and collection, because that will alter, to a certain extent, the quality of the ejaculator. After having the vagina ready, it is necessary to prepare the mare, first of all, the tail must be bandaged from its birth to the lower end, this in order to avoid contamination when making the collection. Then it is necessary to do the placement of the loose ones, with them we will avoid movements of the animal at the moment of the jump that the horse is going to make. Thus taking care of both the operators and the same specimen from which it tries to recover the semen, we proceed to put the horse near her so that she has an adequate sexual stimulation and achieves a good production of the penis, which must be carefully washed with water and then dried with disposable paper, in order to avoid any type of contamination in the sample. In this procedure then the technician is ready to hold the penis by inserting it into the vagina and we wait for the animal to ejaculate to obtain a good volume. We open the valve of the artificial vagina to release pressure and so that we recover all the ejaculate in the bag and here we proceed to recover the sample to start the analysis at the field level. There are many parameters that must be taken into account when saying that this sample is discarded or can be frozen. One of them is the sperm concentration. Another is the progressive and individual mobility of the sperm. Because it is not the same to have an ejaculate in which all the spermatozoa move. But how they move, they move in a circle or they have a movement that is not appropriate. This type of synthsides are not going to be able to fertilize the female, much less are they going to serve to processes such as in vitro fertilization. Once the sample is collected, we are ready to carry out the evaluation at the field level, in this evaluation we seek to determine the quality of the genetic material collected, the first step is then to determine the volume of the ejaculator, a good average in equines can be between 30 and 70 milliliters total, in this case we got 32 milliliters. The next stage consists of determining the concentration of spermatozoa per milliliter of ejaculated semen, one of the most used techniques is spectrophotometry, where the exact number can be known with just a drop of semen, this ejaculate in particular contains a total of 199 million spermatozoa per milliliter. This means that it is an optimal sample and that the procedure can be continued. Later we proceed to determine the pH of the ejaculate, which is important since the semen cannot be very acidic, nor should it be very basic. In this case we do it with a pH tape, which allows us to determine in a range of colors which is the pH that we are closest to. In this case, we have a neutral pH, which is ideal or characteristic within of equine semen. The next step is the dilution of the sample, this is very important so that the semen can preserve its characteristics, especially its vitality, until it arrives at the laboratory. The extender is a substance that, in addition to other components, contains cryoprotectants, which are substances that protect semen or sperm cells from the conditions or environment to which they are subjected, in this case cryopreservation. Then it provides the nutrients and the necessary conditions to be able to be fecundable. In prolonged times the sample will be transported at a refrigeration temperature until it reaches the laboratory, more or less, the temperature does not drop gradually. And the laboratory arrives more or less with a temperature of 5 degrees Celsius. Another fundamental part of the evaluation is the determination of sperm motility, 
Here we are going to take a drop of fresh semen from the original ejaculator and we are going to proceed to look at it under the microscope to determine what proportion of spermatozoa are mobile in this ejaculate so that an ejaculate that is considered to be of excellent quality should have a mobility, hopefully, of more than 80%. This will allow the semen to be suitable and viable enough to withstand the freezing process that we will carry out later. By observing the microscope field it can be established that the percentage of spermatozoa moves in a progressive and homogeneous manner, this is very important since it is what determines their fertilizing capacity, in this test it can be seen that the spermatozoa move quite force, however there are also some with circular movements and others that have simply lost their viability. Taking into account all the parameters evaluated such as volume, concentration, pH and chromatic mobility, it can be considered that it is a suitable sample for freezing and for subsequent genetic analysis. After performing the same procedure with Epico, it is time to go to Bello where we will learn about the semen cryopreservation process. One of the most important parts of the equine semen cryopreservation process is the preparation of the extender, which we are going to use to freeze it. In this case, we are going to be preparing the extender to resuspend this equine semen, which we recovered from two specimens. In the field, the materials we need to prepare the extender in this case are a base extender. This is a commercial type extender which is normally made up of semi-skimmed milk or degreases some antibiotics and some sugars. In the same way we use a substance cryoprotective this cryoprotective substance is very important. Since it will allow the spermatozoa to survive the extreme changes in temperature and the osmotic shocks typical of the process. We also use the egg yolk, in this case it also fulfills a cryoprotective function and that is very important since it protects the sperm, especially at the level of its cell membrane are. This prevents them from being damaged and rendered unviable by the freezing process. All these substances are mixed in a magnetic stirrer for 15 minutes, this will provide the necessary consistency for its optimal operation, while the diluent is ready, a series of evaluations are carried out on the sample brought from the field, where it is sought to confirm that they do meet all the necessary requirements to be cryopreserved. The first consists of verifying again that the individual motility of the spermatozoa maintains a level greater than 80%. In the second, a drop of semen is mixed with a drop of a special tension, which allows, through a 100x objective, to verify the vitality of the sample of the spermatozoa that have allowed the passage of the dye to be dead, while those that remain white are alive, this test also allows verifying that the morphology of the individuals is adequate for a future fertilization process. In the third and last test it is sought to verify the integrity of the cell membrane of each one of them. The sample is subjected to a post-osmotic solution and the reaction of the spermatozoa is observed under the microscope. Only those that coil their tails have a membrane in optimal conditions. After finishing the evaluation the semen must be placed in a storage tube to later be centrifuged at a thousand revolutions per minute for 15 minutes.
This in order to separate the seminal plasma from the spermatozoa, which will remain accumulated at the bottom of the tube, the plasma must be removed manually and then add the diluent that was previously prepared, it is very important that the diluent and the semen are, are at a very similar temperature. This in order to prevent the sperm from deteriorating due to thermal shock. The final concentration must contain 100 million sperm per milliliter to guarantee a good inseminating dose. At the end of the dilution, this material is deposited in special dishes that must be sealed to be cryopreserved correctly. First, they must be subjected to nitrogen vapors for a few minutes before being stored in a liquid nitrogen tank. Until then, the entire freezing process would be, and later, the way, let's say, of verifying the effectiveness of the process and the viability of the semen that we have worked on. Finally, we thaw a straw and observe the basic parameters that we have already seen, such as the progressive mobility and vitality of the sperm mainly. We then conclude that the semen of both horses is in good condition and that the process has been completed satisfactorily.